Now we want other functions. Okay. The very first function we saw was that we had a geometric series, and it was 1 over 1 minus x is, was what it summed up to. That's a function that can be represented by that series. And so the very first thing we'll be able to do is be able to make series off of this series. What if it's not 1 over 1 minus x, but it's 1 over 1 plus x? You know, making one small change to the function, how's that going to change the power series? Um, instead of 1 over 1 minus x, what if it's 1 over 2 minus x? We should still be able to make it look like this and be able to get the power series for it. And so the rest of this lecture is taking this one particular series and getting other series from it and other, other functions from this. And the first one's going to be an easy one, just change small things about it. Instead of a minus x, make it a plus x. And we have to reason out how does that change things on the other side. We're going to algebraically manipulate one side and, and see what it does to the other side. Okay. So first up is to is to take the, the 1 over 1 minus x and, and not replace it with a 1 over 1 plus x. Okay, what does that do? And here's the here's the basic idea. Go back to what we already know and look at the individual elements of it. This numerator needs to be a 1, and it is. Great. The denominator needs to have a 1 in front, and it does. Great. Now, in ours, we need the next sign after the 1 to be a negative. Okay, but what we are looking at right now has a plus. So we make it negative. Okay, by saying 1 plus x is the same thing as 1 minus minus x. So, so why do we do that? Because when it's in that form where the 1 is in the numerator, the 1 is the first part of the denominator, and then there's a minus, when it's in that form, the thing that comes after the minus is the thing that gets raised to the nth power. X gets raised to the nth power. Basically, it's going to be the thing that's in here. The thing that's raised to the different powers. Okay, so I now have a 1 in the numerator, a 1 in the denominator, and a minus sign. After the minus, I have a negative x. That's enough. I know exactly what the series for that's going to be. Instead of x to the n, it's going to be negative x to the n. That's the series for that guy. Okay, so you just change the minus to a plus. That's no big deal. You still know the series for it. We can fix that up. We can look at the first five or six terms of that. So what's the difference? Okay, one has a negative and the other one doesn't. Okay, what's that going to cause? When you take the negative x to the n and break it apart, it's going to cause an alternating sign. Right? It is, it is um, negative x to the n. It, think about that as negative 1 times x, the whole thing to the n, and distribute this across. It is negative 1 to the n times x to the n. It causes the alternating sign. It's the same series you started with, but now the signs alternate. So instead of being 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, it's 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus x squared. So every odd term, I'm sorry, yeah, every odd degree term has a negative on it. Okay. So now we know a second series and a second function. Um, um, and the series that represents that. One thing I forgot to say earlier, but I want to make sure we, we actually pay attention to, is that, that this thing doesn't converge for all x. Right? Remember the geometric series back here? The geometric series only converges so long as the ratio is less than 1 in absolute value. I can only say this is true between minus 1 and 1. Okay, if I go outside of there, this isn't true. This is not a true statement. It is only true in here. Not even at the endpoint. There's no equals 2 on that. Okay, it's only true from minus 1 up to 1. Only good for those x's. 
when we start doing manipulations to it, changing the number here, changing the number there, that, that interval of convergence will just be carried forward. This one is also only true for that same amount of x's, minus 1 to 1. Okay, we're not, we're not changing who it's true for by changing a minus to a plus. So, so 1 over 1 plus x is now represented by this series here. And I can, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm building a library of, of uh, functions that I know the series for. That's what basically the, um, the next section is all about. Um, we, we get some here, but then we, we recognize that what we're doing here is, is all based off of the first one. Anything that's going to come from the rest of this lecture is only about this first one. It's all built off of 1 over 1 minus x. And we're going to say, well, that's, that's, you know, everything can't come from 1 over 1 minus x. What about e to the x? Huh? How can I get a series for that? That's what's in the next lecture, 10, 8, 10, 9. What about other series, other functions? How do I get series for those? In, generic, in, in general, uh, how about just a generic f of x? How can I get a series for that? And the idea is that, okay, you can do it. It's going to take some work. These are nice because they come off of this geometric, but not everything comes off of this geometric. So the idea is, okay, you can do it, and that's called a Taylor series. So, so power series and, and, and Taylor series is what the rest of the class is about, basically. The first section was just sequences, just list of numbers. Section 10, 2 through 10, 6 was just looking at tests and see if it converts or diverge. And now we're looking at power series and Taylor series. That's what, that's what the last part of this, this chapter is about. Okay. Questions? Yeah. So visually what's going on is I, I'm going to represent my function which is the, the, in this case, the, the um, pink. The pink is the function f. Okay? And I, I want to stop. I don't want to go out for infinity. I want to stop someplace. So um, I can stop at 2. I can only take the first two terms. That would be 1 plus x. Um, yeah, this is the, the 1 over 1 minus x guy, I think. Yeah, this is the, the function f is the uh, 1 over 1 minus x guy. It blows up at 1. It's fine at negative 1. Yeah, so, so okay. So if I stop after two terms, this is the function 1 plus x. That's what it looks like. If I stop after five terms, it's the function 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x fourth plus x fifth. And see what's happening. The more terms I get, the more accurate I get the more the graph looks like the function's graph. Once again, I'm going to focus all my attention, though, only on the interval from minus 1 to 1. And they will all be the same at the center. If I want more accuracy, I take more terms. The green one is 11 terms, all the way up to x to the 11. Okay, and you can use that to, to do things with your function then. Um, and we're going to find out that for certain functions that we can't integrate or functions that we can't do things with, we can do it with a polynomial instead. We'll be off because we don't have an infinite polynomial. We'll decide that we want to stop someplace. And the question is, how many terms do we take? You know, so we get the accuracy that we want. That's the big picture. That's where we're headed. Okay, this is the geometry behind it. This is the visual. For this particular function, 1 over 1 minus x. The geometric guy. Okay? Alright. <coughs> so go back to the general idea. Okay, I want this thing f of x to be represented by this function. And um, the power series will be a representation of the function f of x. And I'll have some radius of convergence then I can, I can do other things to it. I mean, I could do this. Like, I mean, yes, I could change that. We had 1 over 1 minus x, and we did 1 over 1 plus x. I could do other things algebraically. Like, um, this, isn't, this is a little bit more difficult. How about this? How about 1 over 2 minus x? We got to figure out what's going on there. And so 
is algebra. It's just more difficult. I mean, this wasn't that bad at all. Just change plus to minus minus, and we worked it out. Okay, but the different parts have to be there. You gotta have a one. You gotta start with the one. Uh oh, we're starting with the two. How can we turn the two into a one? Uh, times by a half, I guess. Yeah, I didn't think about that. A factor out of two is what I want to say. Okay, so make this a two coming out, or times by a half is what you're really doing there. What you're doing is factoring out a two, and what you're left with is a one. Now, this second term is going to be altered, right? There's no 2 involved in this thing. So you put a 2 underneath. Okay. And so what you're looking at is a half of, now it looks the right kind of way. 1 over 1 minus something. And the something is what gets raised to the nth power in your series. The something the thing after the minus sign is what gets raised to the nth power. This guy is represented by x over 2 to the n. So these things we're looking at are actually representations of functions. 1 over 2 minus x is actually equal to this power series. Um, start at 1. Start at 0? Start at 0. Start at 0, actually. And if you want, you can call it x to the n over 2 to the n. There's a function that that thing represents. Okay, then we can do other algebra to it. But um, what this does is this, this keeps it centered at zero by doing this algebra this way. I mean, I can change two into one by making it one plus one. There's other things I can do, but then I won't be centered at zero. I want to be centered at zero, so I want it to look in a certain kind of way. I want it to be one over one minus something and it's that something that gets raised to the nth power. Okay, so these are just algebraic manipulations to to make it look like 1 over 1 minus x. Our goal here is to look like this because we know the series for this. Okay. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Um, before we start doing more complicated manipulations, where we go from algebra manipulation to calculus manipulations, let's do one more algebra manipulation. Instead of um, <coughs> let's go, let's go with this. Let's go one over no three over four minus uh, four plus five x squared. Let's do this. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. I have to do this. I have to stop this. I want to save this slide though. Uh, in the show, keep it. It's overwriting this. That's okay. Copy this. Add a slide. And paste that. Okay, great. All right, let's do one more algebraic manipulation. This will be the worst. And then we'll move on. I'm just adding these to make sure you really understand it. This is what we know. This is what we understand. This is our goal. We want to look like this. Now let's see if we can work it out for 3 over 4 minus. Oh, let's make it plus. Can we get the series for that function? <coughs> what kind of algebra do we do to this to make it look like that? So there's three parts to your goal. There's the one in the numerator. There's the one in the denominator. Then there's the minus sign. You want to accomplish those three things in that order. And then what is whatever is after the minus, that's the thing that gets raised to the nth power. <laughs> So let's deal with the three first. How can I turn a three into a one? 
Uh, factor out. Let's think factor out. Not divide. We don't want to alter it. We want to, we want to do, I guess if we do it at the top, we got to do it at the bottom, I guess you could say like that. Uh, factor out the three. And now it's a one. Great. Part one of our goal done. Good job. One in the numerator. One as the first term in the denominator. We saw it last time. Last example. Factor out a four. I already have the three out there, and now I'm factoring out a four, four from the denominator, that is. What does that denominator become? One plus five x squared all over four. Great. So let me write it like this. Three fourths of one over one plus 5x squared over 4. Great. Doing great. Part 2 to the goal. Done. Doing great. Part 3. Plus, it's going to turn into minus minus. Great. So I'm going to have 3 fourths, 1 over 1, minus minus. This is the blah. This is the thing that gets raised to the nth power. And you keep the three fourths out there. And if you want, you can separate it up into different parts, make it negative one to the n, five to the n x to the 2n all over 4 to the n. These things that we're dealing with on our homework, these actually are representations of functions. This guy is equal to the function 3 over 5 plus x squared. Start at 0. Algebraic manipulations. Just, just alter it by backing something out. Thank <laughs> you.